Hello everyone and welcome to Biz Technology Solutions continuing web series. Today I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about something that I think is really exciting and pretty cool. And that is that Microsoft recently sent an update out to anyone who's running the Office 365 version of Office 2016. And the update provided you with some new functionality that only users of the Office 365 version of Office 2016 will get. So today, I wanted to take a few minutes and introduce you to those new features. Let's first start off with um, three new features in PowerPoint that I think are absolutely amazing. The first one is called Designer. Now, I'm pretty good with words. You know, I can, I can talk pretty well and uh, I'm, I'm fairly good in email and uh, other kind of written exchanges like that. But when it comes to design, I am just terrible. You know, I can create web pages that are technically um, accurate and technically function properly, but they will be hideous looking. Um, partly because I'm colorblind, but um, also uh, I just really don't have an eye for design, you know? So when I create PowerPoint slides, which I have to do quite often, it's often a struggle for me to make them look good. Thankfully, Microsoft understands the struggle, and they've provided me with a really cool tool called Designer. Uh, let me just show you how it works. So here I have a PowerPoint slide, and it's a, you know, pretty basic. It's got a title and a subtitle, and you know, I want to try to jazz it up a little bit. So what I want to do is add a uh, add a picture to this to the slide. So let me just grab a picture here. Take this one, drop it in. Okay, uh, this is okay, I guess. Now, as soon as I drop a picture in here, you'll notice Designer pops up. Boom. It starts giving me some ideas on how I might want to present this slide in a more compelling way. So let's look at some of those. So with just a click, I start getting some much better ways to present this slide. I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. All right. So with the help of designer, I've made my slide look a little bit better. Let's go to my second slide. Now, in, in this slide, I want to include you know a group of photographs. The problem is, is that whenever I've tried to add multiple photographs to a slide, it it generally turns out to look like a child's collage. I can never quite you know I'll. I'll put pictures in and I'll try to size them and you know shrink them and grow them and maybe rotate them a little bit or uh, put one behind the other, but I can never get it quite right. So let's see what happens, how designer can help me deal with, with that dilemma. So let me choose four pictures here. I'll drop these on here. And immediately designer pops up with some design ideas. Wow, yeah. You see, I never would have been able to do that. I, I don't think I would have ever been able to get these angles uh, and get it trimmed like that. I don't, it, it just never would have happened for me. Yeah, this is, this is fantastic. Yeah, this is amazing. This is so much better than anything I would have come up with. Let's go with, let's go with this first one. That is designer with just you know a simple click it's creating a more compelling experience for me in PowerPoint all right so that's the first one now let's talk about the next one which is this next one is really my favorite it's called morph now if you've ever tried to do any type of animation in a PowerPoint slide you know how tedious it can be you get that whole you know um, uh, animation, uh, timing, and how it starts, and how long it goes, and delays, and triggers, and just just all kinds of stuff. It's just a hot mess, right? So Microsoft realized that, and they came up came up with a way to make it easier. So let me just instead of telling you about Morph, let me just demonstrate how Morph can make it easy to do animations in a PowerPoint slide. Check this out. First, right click, 
and I duplicate the slide. On the duplicate, I'm going to make my animation changes. So I want this planet to shrink, and I want it to move to this corner. I want this one to grow and move up here. Saturn, I'm going to take you, grow you just a little bit, and rotate you this direction. Uranus, I want to move you up here and shrink you down a little bit. And Neptune, I'll bring you over here and grow you just a little bit. Maybe you're right there. And then I'm going to get rid of these words. Let me just uh, delete this section and uh, change the color on this one. Okay. Now I have my elements the way that I want them to appear on the second slide, but I'd like for that to happen in a smooth, animated way. So what I do is I go to Transitions, and I choose the new transition called Morph. And here's what happens. Boom. Just like that. Not complicated. Very easy. It did everything I needed it to do. Notice the words, how the words don't just jarringly change from white to red, and the other words don't just disappear, but it's a smooth fade. A fade out of words and a fade in of color. Amazing. Simply moving the object, telling PowerPoint to morph it, gives you incredible, easy to, easy to use animations. All right. The last one I want to show you in PowerPoint is just a, uh, a more compelling way to uh, display your, your content. So here's a PowerPoint presentation with four slides. Just kind of start and we just kind of go through them. And then someone says, yeah, yeah, I remember, let's refer back to slide one. And so you right click and you go, you know, previous, you right click again, okay, previous. Okay, so back to slide one. It can get cumbersome to just you only have a forward and a backward so, so let me show you zoom so here here I have four slides all I have to do is come up and say insert zoom summary zoom I'll choose all of my slides and say insert I'll give it a title okay now what does this do for me well, let me show you. Now, if I click one of these slides, boom, click it again, and I come out. And I can go in any order that I want. Boom. Much more compelling way, I think, to present slides in PowerPoint presentation. Easy, easy. All right. Okay. So that does it for the uh, the uh, the new updates in PowerPoint. Now, I want to show you something in Microsoft Word. This is fantastic. I absolutely love this. There's a new feature in Word for people who have Office 365 version of Word 2016, and that new feature is called Researcher. So let me give you an example. So in this case, I am uh, writing a paper on the Apollo moon landings. Okay, I absolutely love the stories of the Apollo uh, moon landings and the astronauts and the spacecraft. I'm fascinated by it. Um, do you know there's still 7% of the US population who doesn't believe that we ever went to the moon? Here's the hot tip, we went to the moon. Uh, <laughs> in fact, just recently, I think, uh, I think it was India launched a satellite that orbited the moon and took high resolution photographs. It could have been China, I'm not really sure. But took high resolution photographs of the surface of the moon and in those photographs you can see uh, the Apollo 11 and other Apollo landing sites and all the stuff we left behind. The pieces of the lunar module, um, you can see tracks uh, from our rovers, uh, even footprints. It's pretty, uh, pretty incredible and further proof that we did go to the moon. At any rate, I'm writing this. I'm writing this paper, and uh, I want to. I need to get some. I need to do some research. So normally, I would have two monitors, and I would have Word up in one monitor, and I would have a search engine up in the other monitor. Now, 
keep in mind, anything I pull off of the web, I need to reference it. And I need to give a bibliography page and talk about you know where it came from. I gotta cite my sources, right? And I gotta cite them properly. So when you're pulling from multiple websites and multiple sources, that can be difficult to keep track of. Well, let me show you a new feature in Word that makes this whole process child's play. It's called Researcher. So if you go up to References, click on Researcher, it opens up a little search box. I'm going to go ahead and search for Apollo. Goes to the web and it finds all kinds of all kinds of things here. Um, I like this first one. There's 102 sources, and let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, let's go to this overview of Apollo. Let's see what we have. Okay, looks like there's a ton of information in here, and it looks like it's broken up into headings, which is really handy. You know what? I want to I'm going to bring these headings into my document. Let me cut the, oh wait, I don't have to cut it. I can just say add heading. Okay, let's add that heading. Let's find another heading we want. Let's see. Ooh, spacecraft. Definitely got to get the spacecraft in there. What else? Oh yeah, the astronauts. These guys were heroes. Let's get these guys in there. Okay, so I've got my headings in there. Now let's say I want to pull a quote. I want to quote something off of this uh, uh, out of this research here. You notice there are three related sources here. So this is actually pulling from multiple places. But let me go ahead and just grab some information here. I'm just going to grab this paragraph. I normally wouldn't do this, but I'll just grab this paragraph. And now I'm going to say add and cite. Boom. Okay. I've added it. And it's also got this site down here. Now what does that do for me? Well, later on, once I've finished adding this information and I go up, I want to, I have to put a bibliography page with all my, my sources. So I go to references again, bibliography, choose the type of bibli bibliography that I want. I'll just take this first one. Look at that. All of that rich, properly formatted information from the source that I cited up here, which is all came from here. Absolutely incredible. Um, if you're working on papers, if you're writing a technical paper where you're citing sources, or you're in school writing papers, or you've got kids and you're helping them with their papers, this is invaluable. Okay, that does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I hope that you found it useful. I hope you can put it into use. And I hope you join us again for more exciting tips from Biz Technology Solutions. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.